Sumerian lamentation document which follows was apparently authored by Nanar or his spouse Ningal and gives us a clue to the unknown forces that caused the kingship merry-go-round issue which is evident in the Sumerian kings list. Consider the honorable relationship a son expects to have with his father. Do the actions of the father reflect the same courtesy? You decide after reading the dreadful account for the destruction of the city of Ur. Lamentations for the Destruction of Ur Many lament texts have been found, each mourning the destruction of a different Sumerian city. This one speaks for itself. The goddess of Ur, Ningal, tells how she suffered under her sense of coming doom. When I was grieving for that day of storm, that day of storm, destined for me, laid upon me, heavy with tears, that day of storm, destined for me, laid upon me, heavy with tears, on me, the queen. Though I was trembling for that day of storm, that day of storm, destined for me, I could not flee before that day's fatality. And of a sudden I espied no happy days within my reign, no happy days within my reign. Though I would tremble for that night, that night of cruel weeping destined for me, I could not flee before that night's fatality. Dread of the storm's flood like destruction weighed on me, and of a sudden on my couch at night, upon my couch at night, no dreams were granted me. And of a sudden on my couch oblivion, upon my couch oblivion was not granted because this bitter anguish had been destined for my land. As the cow to the mired calf, even had I come to help it on the ground, I could not have pulled my people back out of the mire, because this bitter dollar had been destined for my city, even if I, bird-like, had stretched my wings, and like a bird, flown to my city, yet my city would have been destroyed on its foundation, yet Ur would have perished where it lay because that day of storm had raised its hand, and even had I screamed out loud and cried, Turn back, O day of storm, turn to thy desert, the breast of that storm would not have lifted from me. Then verily, to the assembly, where the crowd had not yet risen, while the Anunnaki, binding themselves to uphold the decision, were still seated, I dragged my feet and I stretched out my arms, truly I shed my tears in front of On. Truly I myself mourned in front of Enel. May my city not be destroyed, I said indeed to them. May Ur not be destroyed, I said indeed to them. And may its people not be killed, I said indeed to them. But On never bent towards those words, and Enel never with an, It is pleasing, so be it, did soothe my heart. Behold, they gave instruction that the city be destroyed. Behold, they gave instruction that Ur be destroyed, and, as its destiny decreed, that its inhabitants be killed. Enlil called the storm, the people mourned. Winds of abundance he took from the land, the people mourned. Good winds he took away from Sumer, the people mourned. Deputed evil winds, the people mourned and trusted them to King Galuda, tender of storms. He called the storm that annihilates the land, the people mourn. He called disastrous winds, the people mourn. Enlil, choosing Gibil as his helper, called the great hurricane of heaven, the people mourn. The blinding hurricane howling across the skies, the people mourn. The tempest, unsubduable like breaks through the levees, beats down upon, devours the city's ships. All these he gathered at the base of heaven. The people mourn. Great fires he lit that heralded the storm. The people mourn, and lit on either flank of furious winds the searing heat of the desert. Like flaming heat of noon this fire scorched. The storm ordered by Enlil in hate. The storm which wears away the country covered Ur like a cloth, veiled it like a linen sheet. On that day did the storm leave the city. That city was a ruin. I, 
Father Nana, that town was left a ruin, the people mourn. On that day did the storm leave the country, the people mourn. Its people's corpses, not potsherds, littered the approaches. The walls were gaping, the high gate, the roads were piled with dead. In the wide streets, where feasting crowds once gathered, jumbled they lay. In all the streets and roadways, bodies lay. In open fields that used to fill with dancers, the people lay in heaps. The country's blood now filled its holes like metal in a mold. Bodies dissolved like butter left in the sun. Nanar, god of the moon and spouse of Ningal, appeals to his father Enlil. O oh, my father who engendered me, what has my city done to you? Why have you turned away from it? O oh, Enlil, what has my city done to you? Why have you turned away from it? The ship of first fruits no longer brings first fruits to the engendering father. No longer goes in to Enlil in Nippur with your bread and food portions. O oh, my father who engendered me, fold again into your arms my city from its loneliness. O oh, Enlil, fold again in my Ur into your arms from its loneliness. Fold again my temple from Ikishungal into your arms from its loneliness. Let renown emerge from you in Ur. Let the people expand for you. Let the ways of Sumer, which have been destroyed, be restored for you. Enlil answered his son Swain, saying, The heart of the wasted city is weeping. Reeds for flutes of lament grow therein. Its heart is weeping. Reeds for flutes of lament grow in. Its people spend the day in weeping. O oh, noble Nana, be thou concerned about yourself. What truck have you with fears? There is no revoking a verdict, a decree of the assembly. A command of On and Enlil is not known ever to have been changed. Ur was verily granted a kingship. A lasting term it was not granted. From days of yore when the country was first settled to where it has proceeded now, who ever saw a term of office completed? Its kingship, its term of office, has been uprooted. It must worry you, my nana. Do you not worry? Leave your city. Wow, what a sorrowful lamentation spawned from a son to a father over a devastating act of destruction. Some key points that are worthy of discussion from the lamentation are now addressed. First, we establish that Nanar Swain, S-U-E-N, Sin, is the moon god in the city of Ur. His wife, the queen, is the Anunnaki goddess Ningal. The following Sumerian kings list snippet captures the second dynasty of Ur, where Nanar, Nani, was enthroned when the lamentation account was written. He ruled for 120 years before Enlil destroyed the entire city. Although the table shows that Ur was ruled for another 48 years by Nanar's son, then two more years under an unknown ruler before kingship was transferred to the Sumer city of Adab. Anu appears to have turned his head looking the other way while Enlil wrought the unstoppable destruction to Ur. Ningal was devastated and it appears to have gone down with her symbolic ship whereas Nanar survives by lifting off in the air in his Anunnaki flying craft to get away from what appears to be a nuclear assault on both flanks of the city at the same time. My point here is that given the number of lamentation documents describing similar carnage by other Sumerian kings, this may be the reason kingship moved from city to city so frequently. The final devastating statement Enlil makes to his son is a resounding expose on the nature of his destructive spirit. Enlil. War was verily granted a kingship, a lasting term it was not granted. Whoever saw a term of office completed, its kingship, its term of office has been uprooted. It must worry you, my nana. Do not worry. Leave your city. Wow. In the excerpt from the lamentation above, Enlil provides a cursory explanation as to why the city of Ur was destroyed, even though his son Nanar was the king and his son. 
In other words, whatever Enel does can be retracted by stating that the statement he had not, it was not forever changing his mind. Then to add insult to injury, Nanner's own father tells him not to fret over all the death and carnage he caused in Ur. Just leave the city. Act like nothing transpired. Where is the soul in this being so hell-bent on destruction, oftentimes done seemingly without cause? Enlil further states, simply, that the kingship is being uprooted. No mention is made about Ningal's safety or her go-forward plan as she is probably one of the victims. Yikes, what a god of wrath and vengeance. Could the vengeance part be real? Unleashing his passive-aggressive grudge against Nanar for leading the Ajiji Rebellion in the South African mines. This seminal historical document forced me to address my own belief system, a lamentation explaining the end of a rulership recorded for us today to reflect upon. The account is a devastating retelling of the destruction of Ur by its king and queen, Nanar Sin, and his consort, Ningal. Nanar is Enlil's son that appears as the African Mind Rebellion scene where he took the leadership role as a fellow god, acted as a community organizer, and led the armed miners in a rebellion to his father Enlil's fortress, surrounding him at night. Imagine the grudge that the high-ranking commander Enlil probably held towards Nanar for leading the Ajiji Rebellion, disrupting progress towards the gold mining efforts. The rebellion led by Allah, Nanar Sin, potentially embarrassed his father in front of his father, Anu, after leaving the African mines unattended. Enlil was rebuked by his father for his destructive offer to kill a miner to end the rebellion and get the productivity numbers back on the high end of the bell curve. Consider the spirit of this being that left Africa operating as a tyrannical overseer, a brutal taskmaster, landing in the Sumerian kingship headquarters at the time of Ur. According to the Sumerian king list, Ur was the place kingship was transferred from the previous city of Uruk, home of King Gilgamesh. This same spirit, represented symbolically with the Lord of the Air mascot, the Bald Eagle. Death from above, hoorah! As a former chopper pilot in the U.S. Army, I heard this kind of saber rattling from many fronts in my soldiering days. So how do we transit from Mesopotamian cities where the mass carnage ensued to a connection to this spirit to the dark forces leading to the New World Order Rebellion. Just follow the symbols and they'll lead you back to the causal source of it all.